What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to talk about why I sold my Vortex Viper 6 to 20 by 50 and replaced it with an SWFA Super Sniper fixed 20 power. So right off the bat, one of the first reasons why I got rid of the Vortex is because of the reticle available in the SWFA. I have another SWFA on top of my Tika T3X rifle and I had the Vortex at the same time as that scope. I was able to make uh, thorough comparisons with the two. And I really liked the layout with this SWFA. A few of the features that I prefer is that it has exposed tactical turrets. that are very large with easy to read numbers. Um, that's both windage and elevation. The other reason I like this scope is because the reticle is MOA and the turrets are MOA. In any scope built current day, those two things should match. If you're looking for a scope, make sure that the turrets and the reticle match. If they don't, it just doesn't make sense. Um, that was a big problem with my Vortex, is that it had MOA turrets, and then it had a mil dot reticle, but the scope was second focal plane, and when you zoomed it up to 20 power, they weren't true mil dots. Now some of the features I really did like with the Vortex was how easy it was to reset the zero of your turrets. They were just on a spring-loaded mechanism. You could pull them up, rotate, and drop them back down without actually adjusting the scope. Really simple, easy to do. You could do it in under three seconds. Um, one, of the re one of the things I didn't like about the Vortex so much is that it had uh, covered turrets. So anytime I wanted to make adjustments for elevation when I was out in the field, I'd have to unscrew those and then uh, go ahead and make my adjustments without losing my cap for the scope. Um, the mount that I have this SWFA sitting in is an AR Stoner 20 MOA mount. It works awesome. It's a true 20 MOA mount and uh, it's very affordable. I think I got it off of Midway USA and I think it's right around $65 to $70, which compared to many other one-piece mounts that are multiple hundreds of dollars, this was a deal and uh, I went ahead and got it and I'm very satisfied with it. Um, more things about this SWFA, I do have a sunshade coming for it and a bubble level. I was able to sell my Vortex for more than the cost of this SWFA and that's where I put the money. I bought a sunshade, I bought a bubble level, um, which brings me to my next point that the Vortex was a more expensive scope and in my opinion for what I do, this has a better feature set and will work better for me than what my Vortex was doing. Uh, one of the benefits of having the Vortex is that you could zoom out to six and a half power. If you're a hunter and you have a closer target than, say, 100 yards, then uh, you definitely want to be able to zoom out. With 20 powers at 100 yards, you have a very limited range of view, and uh, it's a little tricky to get on target when with that high of magnification. As far as the 20 power SWFASS, they offer many magnification ranges uh, and their fixed Super Sniper line. There's a 6, 10, 12, 14, 16, and a 20 power. Obviously I picked up the 20 power and MOA. I believe all of those scopes have an option of mil versus MOA. I prefer MOA just because that's what I've kind of learned. Um, but if you're considering the 16 versus 20 and the only thing holding you up is clarity, don't worry about it, these scopes are plenty clear. It kept right up with the clarity of my Vortex. Uh, the Vortex actually has an erector assembly that uh, changes the zoom of the scope and there's more lenses to look through. So with fewer lenses, it's going to give you a clearer picture than most other scopes uh, at such high magnification. Uh, the limiting factor, of course, being the glass. I wish they made an HD model of their high magnification scopes. Unfortunately, this one is not offered in HD. As of now, it's possible that, that could change in the future. Um, the clicks on these scopes are very audible. Uh, this one seems to feel a little more greased up than my other SWFA which is a little more notchy and I prefer that feel. But if you're looking for more information on this scope, Taborosaurus Rex offers a lot of videos that he talks about these scopes in depth. He's a big fan of them as a budget optic. These run $300 and uh, you can get the 6 power through the 20 power, they're all going to be 300 bucks. you just pick which one you want. I like the 20 MOA because I'm sitting still, my target's sitting still, and I prefer magnification. Um, with the MOA reticle, it makes 
It makes it really easy to do holdovers and holds for wind. Another place where you can find great information on these scopes and other styles of SWFA scopes is Vaughn Precision. I've been talking with him and uh, he's got a lot of good information on these scopes. He's a big fan. He's done a few videos. He's got the 1-6, to which is uh, more of a traditional AR style scope, uh, a little more sporting or three gun style. Um, I shoot long range with my gun. I just that's what I do, so I went ahead and got the fixed 20 power. So be sure to check out his channel. He's got a lot of good content with these scopes. That's going to be it. That's why I sold my Vortex scope and replaced it with this SWFA SS. I feel that this fits my criteria better for what I'm trying to accomplish. And uh, they make a great scope. They're very durable. They track correctly, just like everybody says they do. Both of my scopes have uh, proven to do that already. Um, they're very rugged. They are a little hefty, but compared to my Vortex, this is lighter because it doesn't have the erector assembly where the zoom feature goes through and uh, it doesn't cause me any problems. Um, the overall weight of this gun doesn't bother me at all. It's a scoped rifle. It is what it is. I like the scope on my Tika and I like this scope on my AR. I'm happy with it. If you're going to buy a scope, make sure that your turrets match your reticle. And uh, I think that's going to be it. I appreciate you guys watching this video. We'll talk to you guys later.